everyone. Uh, this is Avi. Uh, we'll be speaking on the topic of shifting to Hasura, uh, lessons from a uh, Rails de developer. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, just get right into it because 10 minutes is a short time. Uh, so just some context on me. Uh, I'm a software engineer that's worked mostly in web startups so far. Uh, and having used both Rails and Hasura in, in fast-moving production environments, uh, my goal here today is to help you all shift your mindset from Rails to Asura uh, without getting into which is better. Um, so we'll highlight uh, some major architectural differences uh, and map some shared concepts. And hopefully at the end of it, you'll have uh, less surprises and more confidence as you get started with Asura. All right, let's get into it. So uh, I'm going to go over a couple of different what I call shifts. And the first one is, is I would say, the most important uh, going from uh, the Rails monolithic uh, MVC architecture to Hasura's event-driven sort of service-oriented architecture. So Rails covers uh, and seemingly always will more web development surface area than Hasura, and, and not just because it has a, a 13 years head start. Uh, it sort of prides itself in the monolith, you know, everything from routing a request to fetching the data for that request uh, and displaying that data in a user-friendly way, uh, serving up the page and everything else. Uh, Hasura, on the other hand, uh, is uh, a backend as a service, uh, and and uh, it, it will cover sort of the common and exhaustingly sort of boring ORM and API server requirements. But uh, you know, bring your own friends, event handlers, and authentication to the table. Uh, it will come prepackaged with you know in a similar value integrated systems sort of way. Uh, with a programmable permissions framework, uh, subscriptions, and then most recently scheduled triggers alongside uh, triggers. Now, I kind of anticipate Azure will quickly eat more of these common backend concerns and abstractions, um, anything from inbound, outbound email, uh, database choice, and the management of the database for replicas and partitions. It's only two years old. Um, and, and while has, uh, Rails has sort of this you know, equivalent abstractions to say uh, subscriptions or, or triggers like action cable and active job, be it with, you know, sidekick or rescue or, or whatever, uh, that I would argue that these capabilities, they integrate well with Rails, but are not native to its architecture. And this is a result of a sort of fundamental difference in the architecture of the data flow between Rails and Azure. And I think that's worth taking a closer look at. So let's first take a look at Rails. Uh, in sort of model view controller fashion, a controller receives RESTful requests from the outside world uh, via router, uh, interacts with the model to update the application state, uh, and prepares the appropriate view to the user. Uh, side effects are sometimes handled inline. Uh, at other times, they're pushed to uh, job queues. Um, and you know, to notify the client of some of these changes versus pulling for them, you might have a pub sub. Uh, via action cable that runs sort of side by side to the regular request response mechanism. Uh, to, uh, another thing to note is the web workers, the job workers, and the pub sub workers all run from the same shared code base. Now we can sort of compare that to Hasura, oops, compare that to Hasura, uh, which uh, you can see the request and the response cycle and the pub sub uh, share the same sort of uh, specifically GraphQL API interface and infrastructure. And all the side effects uh, are persisted as events to be processed asynchronously. And to process those events, webhooks, and other custom sort of business logic that you have, you're going to need some services outside of Hasura to do that, which kind of lends itself to this sort of service-oriented architecture. And PubSub and eventing in general is, is brought to the forefront uh, to make uh, an event-driven architecture. Uh, and it's sort of a useful way of looking at this difference is uh, from a functional programming perspective. Uh, kind of, uh, this is a, a screenshot from one of my favorite talks by Martin Kleppman. Uh, and kind of what it covers is basically uh, a story that, well, a story that you can tell that the browser, uh, paint, what the browser paints is just a function of what the template renders, which is just a function uh, of the, JSON data from your API, which is just a function of the relational data from your uh, database. So if the entire application is just a function of our data, then we can run that function every time a state change has been made. And so that uh, and that sort of mindset actually is very incorporated into the core of Azura. Uh, actually, they describe the pattern as a three-factor app 
which kind of has some analogies to Redux. Um, and so you can check out Three Factor App for some more details on that. Uh, but I would also emphasize that GraphQL here is not not the difference. Uh, it's you know Firebase would be the RESTful equivalent, uh, more so that Rails centers around the sort of concepts of model view controller, MVC, REST, and a request and response like a uh, out and back. And Asura kind of centers more around an event driven architecture, uh, GraphQL, uh, and subscribe and notify more like a loop. Um, and so uh, that, that would say is like the biggest difference and, and fighting the f a framework in either case uh, is, is sort of going against the Rails way or the Hasura way. And you'll kind of find yourself having a less happy experience with either framework if you sort of don't incorporate these opinions of these kind of fairly opinionated pieces of software. So let's uh, now jump to a second shift here, which is uh, sort of REST versus GraphQL. I, obviously you'll be using uh, GraphQL uh, when working with Astura, fighting that is pretty futile. Um, and it's not just any GraphQL API. I'd call it sort of this perfectly defined uh, API for you know both you know its auto generation. Uh, we didn't write much, m most of the code, but also for its expressiveness and, and compatibility with sub specifications like Freeway. Uh, it, it also uh, forces a sort of built-in command query separation, especially uh, when a workflow in your domain isn't fitting into CRUD. You can kind of safely set aside your sharpened Ruby knives when you know moving from Rails to Hasura. And so uh, on the left here, of course, is like your classic uh, Rails uh, sort of uh, paths to doing different sort of actions. And, and on the right uh, is the query fields that you get just out of the box from Hasura. And you know, before diving deeper into those, um, it's important to note that like you can implement GraphQL in, in Rails, of course, really anything is possible in Rails. Uh, and you know, that's possible with the GraphQL Ruby gem plus API only controllers. It's just not at the forefront of the Rails way, right? REST and sort of CRUD is. And, and then this is just a screenshot pulled from, you know, they're getting started guides, of course. Uh, and instead of discussing further into how I would map, you know, the left side here into the right side, I think there's plenty of coverage on how to shift your mindset from REST to GraphQL or CRUD or, you know, REST-based CRUD to uh, GraphQL. Uh, I wanted to sort of talk about two general points that relate to how applications talk to the database in the web world. And, and one of those, of course, is authentication. It's like a super important part of how clients make requests to the servers. And in Rails, you have action dispatch, uh, session, or the sort of loved, hated uh, device gem uh, when working with Rails. Uh, but in Hasura, um, Del uh, like Hasura, in Hasura, authentication is totally handled outside. And they have just built in ways to plug into it. And those standard ways are webhooks and uh, JWTs or JSON web tokens. Uh, this is position is kind of generally in line with the trend of the vendorization of sort of authentication. And there's plenty of tutorials on Auth0, AuthGuardian, AWS, Magneto, kind of any integration that you're looking for. Uh, the other bit is I, I wanted to talk about is in Rails, if some flow isn't feeling restful or, or just, you know, you want to, you need to get around the convention, uh, it's really easy. You just you just write more code and, and it's pretty straightforward. But in Asura, we, we didn't write the server. So how can we customize it? There are a couple options, but, um, Custom actions is your simplest escape hatch when pushing up against the limits of CRUD GraphQL API, uh, or you need to depend on sort of some, some libraries or, or some custom conditional logic. Some simple examples here would be sort of generating uh, and returning a JWT from an unauthenticated Hasura query field, right? So this is setting up your authentication endpoint or using the result of uh, one complex mutation to make another. And, uh, it's not always perfect. Sometimes you have to work a, a little harder uh, when you don't have a server that you wrote yourself. And, and an example here is getting what, what's the current time on the server. And and this is not as straightforward. You have to create a view here uh, on your uh, in your Postgres database and uh, just get the now timestamp and, and return that as a view and expose that through the API. But it's all possible. And um, for the most part, uh, CRUD will get you so far along the way, especially in the GraphQL context and the expressive API that they've given you. The third shift that I wanted to uh, talk about was uh, sort of the ORM, which is an active record uh, is one of the most 
important sort of parts of Rails. It's the M and the MVC. And regardless of whether you're rolling your own front end or using GraphQL, you'll definitely be generating migrations, building and querying models, or configuring validations uh, and callbacks. So where is the ORM in Hasura? And the catch is there isn't one, at least in the same shape, uh, size, or form. In Hasura, we kind of experience the ORM and the API layer as one. Uh, and from a CRUD perspective, uh, Hasura Vecchio API provided out of the box is equally, if not more, expressive abstraction over SQL. And we can kind of look at some examples here. On the left side, you have some pretty standard Rails uh, active record code. Uh, and on the right, sort of the mapping that you can get sort of find, find by, select, filters, joins, uh, nested where clauses that are doing much more complex joins that you could uh, sort of struggle to do with an active record. Uh, creator update or finder update or finder create um, update all, all pretty out of the box given to you from Hasura. And so that covers CRUD. What about all the other good parts of Active Record? I think uh, there's some listed here, which I won't get into all of them, but migrations, for example, largely ex inspired, I think, by Rails on the Hasura side uh, is supported out of the box. And instead of using a CLI and a DSL, that's like borderline ergonomic. Uh, instead, you get a user-friendly UI and you can kind of generate all the uh, up and down migrations as you need. Um, the other bit is around, um, say, scripting. Let, let's pick that as an example uh, just from the list here. And I, it's probably what I'll miss the most from Rails, uh, really Ruby. Uh, and while graphical, like the, the interface where you can kind of type queries and, and test out uh, and edit one-off queries uh, in, from the Hasura UI, uh, you know, the ability to like, just jump into a Rails console. It's something I always have open while developing in Rails. And to kind of like, you know, get around this, I think there's two kind of, at least one saving grace is that uh, the backfill scripts or seed scripts in Azure all communicate over HTTP API. So at least there's only one system that you have to learn versus learning, you know, the API or and the ORM at the same time. Uh, and and the other saving grace as a complement to that is Sura is super fast, so you wouldn't have to really worry about performance here. In general, I think regarding the ORM and the approach that Rails and sort of Hasura takes, I wanted to sort of highlight, this is a key, I think, like tendency difference between the two technologies, abstraction of the database. I think Rails, you'll see, tends to hide it from the user and protect you from it. And Hasura tends to say, no, dive in, and, and kind of exalts it to uh, sort of embrace the database. Actually, a lot of the features about how that powers Azure is very database native features. The last shift uh, is uh, hardly a shift at all. And uh, it's talking about the pillars at the core of these technologies. And I think it, it's hardly a shift at all because uh, when I uh, when researching this topic, I went back to reread uh, sort of this controversial Rails doctrine that outlines the most important pillars that led to the rise of Rails and it's kind of guides its continued development. And on the left here are the nine sort of principles. And I was surprised to find that Azure shares like many of these foundational pillars. You know, everyone is, uh, Azure is built uh, to make it super easy to program and feel pretty good while programming in it and uh, sort of, increase the productivity of the developer. Uh, I think the probably the two major differences is here between Azure and Rails is no one paradigm and provide sharp knives. I think no one paradigm, uh, I think Azure pretty strongly is tied to GraphQL and an event-driven microservices approach. Uh, it's also a backend as a service versus a spanning sort of web development framework. Um, and, uh, I think the other one is that I think differs a little bit is providing sharp knives. And I think Hasura, you know, instead pushes this codeless pre-cut approach with auto generation um, and you know, custom actions here as a counter example, but it focuses on the common and the plumbing, and the same basic toolbox, leaving you to the rest, uh, either with a built-in escape hatch or just complete freedom. And so with that, I kind of wanted to just give a summary here of different shifts that you can make uh, and kind of help you sort of move from this monolithic MVC REST CRUD based uh, sort of model to a more event driven service oriented architecture that sort of revolves around GraphQL. So uh, thanks for tuning in and feel free to get in touch with any of the links here. And I hope that's helpful as you make the shift to Hasura. Thanks. <laughs>